virtual tour of Krakow from Poland. Along the journey, there will be several points of interest which will be talked about along the way. This tour was recorded on a horse and carriage that you can rent for an hour when you're in Krakow. Points of interest outside the city include the village at Saltmine, the Tatra Mountains and the former Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz. We start this journey from the main market square. It is the largest medieval town square in Europe, measuring 200 square meters. The main landmarks of the square are the right. Town Hall Tower on the left, the right. Sukia Nisa or Cloth Hall, right. which is right. in the middle of the square, the St. Mary Basilica, which is far in the back, and the St. Aldebert Church, which is a small church which we are passing by. Street, which led us towards the Babel Castle, the old king's residence. On the right, we can notice the restaurant Dierzhenek, which dates back to 1364. of Assisi's church on the right. squares in the city, the St. Mary Magdalene Square. St. Peter and Paul's Church is situated on the left, as well as the older Gothic St. Andrew's Church with the two towers.
Krakow is sometimes called a city of a hundred churches. Most of them are Catholic because this is a major religion in Poland. Nadal Castle is on the right. with an armory and the cathedral are situated on the hill. Polish royalty and many distinguished Poles are interred in the Wawel Cathedral. Royal coronations also took place there. The Wawel Cathedral is Poland's national sanctuary. It was the coronation site of nearly all Polish monarchs. the Vistula River, which is not visible from this point of view. It is worth mentioning about the Dragon of Wawel Hill, or simply the Wawel Dragon, which is a famous dragon in Polish folklore. A popular version of the Wawel Dragon Tale takes place in Krakow during the reign of King Krakos, the city's legendary founder. Each day the evil dragon would beat a path of destruction across the countryside, killing people, pillaging their homes and devouring their livestock. In many versions of this story, the dragon especially enjoyed eating young girls and could only be appeased if the town folk would leave a young girl in front of his cave once a month. The king certainly wanted to put a stop to this awful situation, but his bravest knights fell to the dragon's fiery breath. In the versions involving the sacrifice of young girls, every girl in the city was eventually sacrificed except one, the king's daughter, Bunda. In desperation, the king promised his beautiful daughter's hand in marriage to anybody who could defeat the dragon. Great warriors from near and far fought for the prize and failed. One day, a poor cobbler's apprentice named Dratevka accepted the challenge. He stuffed a lamb of sulfur and set it outside the dragon's cave. The dragon ate it and soon became incredibly thirsty. No amount of water could quell his stomach ache and after swelling up from drinking half of the Vistula River, he exploded. The apprentice married the king's daughter, as promised, and they lived happily ever after. The medieval Krakow was surrounded by a 1.9 mile defensive wall, complete with 46 towers and seven main entrances leading through. The fortifications around the old town were erected over the course of two centuries. In the 19th century, most of the old town fortifications were demolished. The moat encircling the walls was filled and turned into a green belt known as the Plenty Park.
St. Francis Assisi's church, it is worth mentioning the most important person for Poland and its history, John Paul II, who used to be a bishop in Krakow. At only 58 years of age, Cardinal Karol Wojtyla was elected Pope John Paul II in 1978. He died in 2005, just after a few months when Poland joined the European Union in 2004. The collapse of the Iron Curtain would have been impossible without John Paul II. We are back in the main market square. Thank you for your time. We hope that you have enjoyed this tour and you are welcome in Krakow in Poland.